Hey people, what's up? K Hart here. So today I want to talk about loops and how to use them creatively in Ableton Live. And whether you're a brand new Ableton user or you've been using it for a while, hopefully some of these tips and tricks will show you how easy it is to manipulate these loops into your own creative and unique style in Ableton. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this drum loop that I have loaded in here. And all of these examples are going to be drum or percussion loops, but a lot of the techniques that I'm going to show you are actually applicable to melodic loops as well. So let's listen to what this drum loop sounds like. So probably the easiest and fastest way to start getting creative really quickly is Ableton's option to slice to new MIDI track. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring up this box and it offers us a few different options to actually chop up the sample automatically and give us a brand new drum rack. And now I have all these different slices that I can either rearrange in the MIDI or actually play on my keyboard in the drum rack that is pre-made for me. The next option that's also super simple is actually manually creating a drum rack. So let's go back to that same drum loop. I have a MIDI track this time and I've put just an empty drum rack on there. And I'm going to come in and just pick the sounds that I want to take from this loop. And I'm literally just going to highlight them and drag them down to the cells on that drum rack. And this is a great option if maybe you want to use different samples or combine samples from different loops into a single drum rack. All right, the third trick I like to use, and this is probably my favorite and I use it the most, is actually merging different loops to create one new unique loop. I had to say that slowly. So here's our original loop. I'm gonna grab a new drum loop and put it right underneath that original one. And the new loop sounds like this. So let's say I didn't like the hi-hat and the clap from the original loop and I wanna replace it with these sounds from the new loop. So literally just as easy as the last one, I'm going to just highlight the areas that I wanna take and drag them up to the loop above and it's going to replace whatever audio was there with the new audio from this new loop. And I can actually use samples from the same loop as well. So say I don't like this big gap there, I can actually take this kick sample, hold control while I'm moving it so it's gonna duplicate it rather than cut it. And then I'm gonna hit R to reverse it. And that doesn't sound bad, but I actually wanna stretch that kick to just be a little bit longer. And I can do that by coming over here to the clip, hovering over the side, holding shift, and then you can time stretch it. And now it actually sounds a little bit weird. So what I'm gonna do is come down here to that audio sample, to the warping options and change it from beats to tones. And that'll allow me to change the grain size. And I'm gonna pull that as far down as it'll go. So now it sounds a little less distorted. And that's a great tip if you want to time stretch things usually changing it to the tones or the texture options for warping will give you that grain option. And usually taking the grain size down, you can get rid of a lot of artifacts from stretching things. And now that I'm happy with the loop that I made, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the last piece that I have and hold shift and click on the first and hold control J to consolidate it. And what that's gonna do is take all those little chops that I have in the middle and clean it up and turn it into one nice tidy loop that we can duplicate, move around, do whatever with. And here's the new loop that we created. On to the next tip. In my video on five music production mistakes I made as a beginner, I talked about not using Ableton's groove pool. And it's just such a powerful tool, especially for making grooves and just getting swing. And what's even more powerful is you can actually use loops to create your own custom grooves. So here I have a hi-hat loop, and let's say for some reason I don't want to use this loop in particular. Maybe I don't like the sound of the hi-hat, or maybe it has some annoying vinyl crackle in the background that like every lo-fi sample seems to have. I can actually right-click on this and come down to this option that says Extract Groove. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to take out all of the timing and velocity information from that loop and give me a custom groove in Ableton's groove pool that I can then drop onto my MIDI. And here is my boring hi-hat MIDI that I just drew in. So there's no swing, there's no velocity information, it's pretty static. And I'm just gonna drop that groove that we just extracted from the drum loop onto this MIDI track. And I'm gonna keep the timing at 100%, so all of that swing is gonna be put into this MIDI track. 
And I'm also going to change the velocity up to 100% as well so that all of the velocity information will be put in here too. And the last trick I like to do is actually use a percussive loop with some good rhythm along with Ableton's vocoder to actually make my chords sound a little bit more interesting. So let's start with these boring chords. And I'm gonna drop a percussive loop that has some good rhythm like this one right underneath it. Then I'm gonna grab Ableton's vocoder and drop it right on that audio channel with the percussion loop. I'm gonna change the carrier from noise to external. And then I'm gonna change the audio from to the synth chords that I have playing at the top. And now we have our synth playing that percussive rhythm. And you wanna leave this at 100% wet for this effect. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this formant knob down just to uh, change the timbre of this a little bit. And now let's layer that with our original chords. That's nice, that's a lot more interesting. And that's gonna do it for this one. If you enjoyed or found any of that informative, please remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not so you don't miss future videos, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.